Welcome to another week as we go through lessons 25 through 28. Grab your manual, let's get started. Actually, before I get started, I meant to say this last time, but some of you who've been joining me may notice that I'm, I'm in the same room. I've just got a little bit of a different setup. I actually went and bought a desk, a real desk. I was using one of my uh, end table on paint cans to get it high enough and I'm like okay that's just not going to work so I went out and got a desk now I was just trying to find the angle for the camera so you don't see the whole room just a certain portion of the room so therefore that's why it looks a little different and now that I'm done with that let's see what materials will be needed this week you're going to need a dry erase board some pencils at least two pencils Preferably not of the same length. Your Tangram set, the Abacus, your math card games with the place value cards, because the game this week is going to use the place value cards, the worksheets, and Abacus tiles. This is a new item. We'll talk more about it when we get to it in the lesson, but these are like, they almost look like business cards. They're called Abacus tiles. And then the math journal. And you know the math journal is found in the worksheets. I just want to highlight, though, to let you know we are going to use it this week. All right. Lesson 25, triangles with right angles. Look at your objectives. We're going to learn and review the term perpendicular, to learn the term right angle, and to learn the term right triangle. So this lesson is going to help you to help your children learn what is a right angle and then to be able to recognize it in the shapes such as the triangle. The warm up is pretty short for this lesson. So again, if your child needs more work in some areas, you could add it in here or not. So just looking at it, I just want to make sure you guys look to the explanations when it talks to talking about the perpendicular lines and how it refers to the relationship between the lines where the right angle refers to the space between the lines. So you're going to show them things like here's parallel and then you're going to have it kind of connected and it's going to come this way. We're going to get all the way up here and we're going to learn that this is a right angle. It's the space in here that makes the right angle. So that's what that teacher explanation means. It also says to show it using your hands, which that just looks kind of awkward to me. But I guess, uh, let me do this. <laughs> Sorry, found that a little funny. I just find this whole thing funny. To do the right angle. Okay, like I said, awkward, a little awkward, but all right, try it with your kids, see how it works. You'll be using the tangrams again, and then you're going to ask your child to construct certain triangles using more than one of the triangles in the tangram set. Thankfully, it gives you the same example of what it looks like at the bottom. And again, guide your child through if they're struggling with it. Don't tell them, but maybe pull out the two shapes and see if they could figure it out. Some of your children, no big deal. They've got that visual going. They can get it done quick. Some of your children, not so quick. Let them have time to try to figure it out on their own first before you say anything or tell them anything. So the in conclusion is asking about capital letters and which ones have right angles. You may need to find an alphabet to show your child if they need it. Lesson 26, adding 10 to a number. The activity adding 10 to a number on the abacus is where I really can see the benefit of using the math way of saying our numbers. I'm gonna show you the example that's in the lesson. So we asked the child to enter 27. We're gonna enter 10 more. How many do we have entered now? Three, ten, seven. So let's say an equation for this. Two, ten, seven plus one, ten equals three, ten, seven. 
I think it's a lot easier than if you say, let's enter 27 and enter another 10. And now we have 37. So we enter 27 plus 10 equals 37. Now some children are going to get that. But if you say it the math way, it really solidifies how many tens. You have two tens, seven plus one ten. We have three tens, seven. You're going to use the game out of the game book, and you're going to have a little bit of a variation of it to use for this concept of adding ten. You'll be playing the game. Can you find plus ten game? So it's a game you've used before but we're going to adapt it now to incorporate the concept that we're learning. There's specific questions you can ask your child. You can ask your child any other questions you want. It does say that if your child needs it, if they'll benefit by it, let them use their abacus. And worksheet eight also says, let the child use the abacus while they're working out these problems. Now, if you have a child that just is insistent, they don't need to use the abacus, they can do it on their own, fine. Let them do it on their own. But pick out one or two and ask them to show you how they, you can do it on the abacus. Just to verify, just to make sure they truly understand what they're doing. Lesson 27, we're just zooming along. Adding ones and tens. I know you guys are all reading the objectives, right? Just in case you're not, let's read number two together. To realize the similarity between adding ones and adding tens. So this lesson is really kind of cool because your child, you know, they've been adding ones on the abacus and now they're going to realize they can add tens on the abacus also. It starts off with partitioning 10 on the abacus, and then it's going to partition 10, 10 on the abacus. And that's the part I want to show you is, oh, get this right, is partitioning 10, 10 on the abacus. So you're going to enter 10, 10s, which basically you can just slide it all over. That would be entering it. And when you partition apart, you're going to set it slightly off to the side. So now we're partitioning 10 tens. We have two and we have eight tens. So we have two tens and eight tens equals 10 tens. What's the other name for 10 tens? 100. This next section, adding tens again reinforces why using the math way of saying numbers is so beneficial. So let's enter 210. Let's enter 210. We're going to enter three more, 10, 310. How many have we entered now? We've entered 510. So notice 210 plus 310 is 510 versus 20 plus 30 is. So can you hear the difference? It just makes it so much more clear calling it the math way. Now we can go back and you can call it 20 plus 30. That's fine equals 50. But you really hear it in the 210 plus 310 equals 510. And so that's why it's important to use the math way of saying the numbers. You can go back and switch it around and we're going to go back. We're not going to always call it the math way. But if you do this for a little bit, get that, just get it so solidified in their brain. It really makes that mental math so much easier to do. We end this lesson comparing adding ones to adding tens. So for example, we have six plus three. What does that equal? nine. We have six ten. Plus three ten. What does that equal? Nine tens. Oops, sorry. Trying to get away. Isn't that cool? I just love it. 
I love it. So six plus nine, six ten plus nine ten just makes sense. Last lesson for this week, lesson 28, introducing hundreds. This is the lesson that calls for the tile cards, the abacus tiles. And that's what it is. It's just a card. It looks like a business card almost. It's a little bit shorter. And it has an abacus on it. And there's comes, there's, I'm not sure how many there are. Probably 20, maybe 15. I don't know. I have not counted them. These also can be found on Right Start's website, rightstartmath.com. You can go to, to resources, down to teaching support, and then there will be a section that says the Super Saver uh, kit uh, download. Sorry, the Super Saver download. And you can find these there. Now, you don't have to print them out so they're in color. It'll work just fine for them to be black and white because you can see the difference between the number or the colors here. In this lesson, using the abacus, the child will understand what is 100, and then you're going to have them talk about more than 100, and that's where these tiles come in handy. So when you're talking about 200, they'll, you know, they can put out two of these to represent 200. So there's a game in here called Making Hundreds Games. You're going to need the place value cards. You're just going to need the tens and the ones. Put the others aside. You're going to lay these all out. So I'm just going to lay them out. Move the abacus. That way you can kind of see a little bit. What they're going to do, and well, it's, oh, it's a solitaire game. We like solitaire games, don't we? I mean, it's fun to play games with our kids, but I always like it when there is a solitaire game that they can work on on their own. So it's really a simple game, and I think it'll be fun for your child. They're going to compose a number, so they could pick anything they want. So let's say we pick 4102. I'm going to enter this quantity on the abacus. I have four, ten, two. There we go. Four, ten, two. Now, what is the amount I need to make 100? Well, it's what's left, right? So, how many is here? Five, ten, eight. So, I'm going to look for my five, ten. I look for my eight. I build it. I have four, ten, two, five, ten, eight. I'm going to enter this into my journal. So your child's going to enter this into their math journal. Five, ten, sorry, four, ten, two plus five, ten, eight equals one hundred. And then you're going to have your child repeat this three times. Make sure they write it in their journal. Now the next section down here is like have the child repeat and have her write the four equations. This is just an example. Your child's going to write the equations that they came up with. And look over there to the side. Look at how many different arrangements you can make for this game. That's crazy. So notice the in conclusion. You want to do this before your child puts away all those place value cards. And if they do and you miss it, that's okay. Have them look in their math journal at those numbers. But if you could just have them look at the numbers and you say, how much does that equal? Okay, they might be like, oh my gosh, it might be really intimidating because they think they're going to have to add it all. But remind them, what did 48 and 52 equal? And then hopefully they'll see that all those numbers together equal 400. Well, another week under our belt. Next week, we will work on lessons 29 through 32. Until then.